Hey, it's Dr. Pelosi. I'm here today with our latest fellow, Dr. Stephen Stamp from New Mexico. Okay. So, Dr. Stamp, two weeks of training at the INCG one-on-one course. What do you think? This has been a life-changing experience. Um, I think um, I received much more than I expected. And I think um, what you do here, um, not only is life-changing for your patients, but also for um, the students in your tutelage. Now, go on. Now, you've trained in, in general surgery. You, you've had extensive training all over the place in multiple procedures. What, what did you like the most about this format? I think this format allowed me to, um, to finally consolidate, um, as you said before, um, different experiences from different practitioners over the years of my training from the cosmetic slant allowed me to, in my mind's eye, um, put it all together to better effect change in my own patient population. Now, how long have you been thinking about aesthetics in general? Pretty much most of my, most of my surgical career. Um, my very first experience um, in the operating room was during a plastics or cosmetic procedure. Um, it was more reconstructive, but nonetheless. Um, and I'd always had an interest and an inclination um, because of my appreciation for the artistic aspects of surgery. And um, a fellowship in plastic surgery was not uh, feasible for me at the time in training. Right. Now you have an interesting background. You're a photographer, is yes. that right? Yes, that's right. That's now right. Tell, me, tell me a little bit about that. Sure. How did you get into that? You know, um, I've always been artistic. I played the drums for a long, long period of time in my life. And um, music and art has always been a part of my, my individuality and even my family surroundings. And um, I uh, took an interest in photography, mostly landscape to be quite frank from the beginning, um, during sort of the mid part of my surgical training. And as I was training in New York City, it opened up an opportunity to work with um, fashion designers and models on runway. Um, that led to a five season career, if you will, um, <laughs> in fashion photography in, in New York City. Um, I then parlayed that um, to uh, smaller works. Uh, I published uh, several um, editorial um, uh, 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 photographic uh, exposés, as well as um, covered um, for Elle magazine and uh, various runway designers. That's got quite a resume. Yeah. Yeah. Now, do you, do you think that working now in the aesthetic space has sort of sparked that same side of your brain, the creative side? Very much so. The excitement I feel when I'm on the runway, when the music's pumping, that's all I do when I'm in the operating room and we know that we're, the patient's going to wake up with a fantastic result. Now, of all, of all the work that you saw here, uh, what is your favorite, uh, what, what do you think is going to be the highest uh, volume uh, aspect of, of your practice that you're going to bring back? I think what I'm going to bring back will be um, probably a, a large share of um, liposuction and fat transfer. I think that's uh, de definitely a trend, not only nationally, but because of the, the country that I live and practice in, obesity is a problem. Um, a lot of folks um, undergo bariatric procedures, or otherwise looking for ways to enhance their figure um, beyond what they can get with diet and exercise. And then the other half probably would be breast augmentation. I think it's still probably one of one of the most, if not the most popular cosmetic procedure performed in the country uh, for various reasons. Um, you know, when I first came to this, I always thought it was always about vanity, but I realized that a lot of women um, deal with asymmetry, they deal with small breast size, they deal with the effects of cancer and other tumors in the breast. And um, helping a woman gain her, regain her confidence through a shapely form is, uh, is an asset and uh, that's something that I'm willing and uh, happy to be able to provide. Now, what did you think of the axillary technique? I think that the axillary technique is, it, it's brought to my mind what I had always envisioned in terms of offering a breast uh, augmentation with minimal scars on the breast itself. The, um, the idea of cutting around the nipple uh, or even in the inframemory space um, always kind of gave me hesitancy, even though I'm aware that it, there are instances where it's necessary. A breast reduction obviously cannot be done without making a large scar in the uh, nipple space and in the inframemory space. But for pure um, breast uh, volume enhancement, the axillary technique seems to me to be um, new age, functional, uh, technical, and it leads to a, uh, a, a very nice result. That's fantastic. Now you also got to see our uh, abdominoplasty techniques with the uh, closed neo-umbilicus. Right. What was your impression? Right. You know, I always thought that you had to reimplant the umbilicus after uh, after abdominoplasty. 
Um, I think seeing two techniques in which um, the dermal space was tacked back to the fascial space, and another one where you went essentially through and through the, the skin level to recreate the end canvas. Um, and the result pre and post op is fun. I think in my practice, in a robust way, will be, uh, be removing the underlying information. That's great. Yeah. That's great. Now, you have a general surgery background. Uh, do you think that most general surgeons uh, would find two weeks of training adequate to uh, pick up the skill set? I think, you know, everyone's training is different. And mine in and of itself was unique um, because I trained in New York and, and in surrounding areas. Um, and so I think two weeks um, of training for a surgeon who's been experienced in general surgery and operating at baseline um, is adequate. Um, now, in my case, I already had an eye for beauty and had an eye for, for, for aesthetics through my fashion photography and other artistic endeavors. And so for me personally, that's... That that's that's an adequate time to add um, all those things uh, together. I think uh, future courses to refine one's skills um, would always be um, uh, beneficial. And one has to be honest with him or herself as to whether or not they need further training. Right, yeah. right, right. So now, now that you're going to come back, how soon are you going to jump into it? Well, um, my staff has been working furiously this entire time, <laughs> trying to <laughs> gather supplies. Great. Uh, we've been re re reworking the way how we do our patient flow. Um, I've been doing a lot of uh, you know uh, work and research into how to market myself. My whole goal is to approach this systematically, to offer my patients um, the best care possible. I'm completely confident with uh, offering care when I can and referring patients to to more um, to more seasoned practitioners when I cannot. But I think that's how everybody should be. I think um, if you've got a true eye and a passion for aesthetics and a training program, particularly if you have experience in the surgical space, because that's what I know most, um, this is this is your way in. Um, this is a way to to learn and to at at the feet of of masters in the field, quite quite frankly, um, and this allows you to uh, to incorporate uh, for your patients procedures that may may not be readily available in your area or um, procedures that you may have been afraid to offer in the past. This gives you the confidence you need to be able to, uh, to dispel the myths behind it. It's a pleasure. It's been a pleasure to have you here. It's a pleasure to work with you, and it's a pleasure to keep working with you yes, sir. throughout Same your here. career, man. Same here. All right. We expect, we expect to see each other more often. Absolutely. I'm ready for Florida. All right. <laughs>